Sure. Uh, so for the uh, data tasting, this is, what are we timing it at? 10 minutes? Let's, let's start clock 10 minutes. Yeah, so I mean, th this is just, you know, like, so that we, like, all just have, like, a chance to let our hair down, kind of, like, you know, talk about a specific application. Uh, so this is uh, the one at the Illinois Network of Charter School folks. Uh, we're kind enough to serve up their data just to, uh, you know, for, like, a, a general discussion. So uh, I've been in touch with uh, Catherine and Ellen. So uh, do you guys want to give an introduction of the group, like, the, the data set, the kind of, like, Sure. Yeah, the, the sense behind uh, cracking it open, and then we'll look into it. All right. Uh, so, who here knows what a charter school is? Okay. Uh, so, okay. So, for those of you that uh, that are not familiar, charter school is a uh, a public open enrollment school that is privately operated. So, essentially, uh, charter schools receive um, more freedom, so they're kind of free from the most of the controls of the central district, and in exchange for that increased autonomy, they get increased accountability. So uh, they have contracts where they have to achieve certain uh, academic outcomes. Uh, and uh, in Chicago, mo most charters in, in the state are uh, here in Chicago, uh, and particularly we have a lot of uh, high school charters. So, um, what, and that is the data set we are going to look at today. So, a little bit about our organization before we jump into the data, and uh, feel free to interrupt. Yeah, go ahead, Nick. Oh, uh, will you want to drive, or should I drive? You, you drive, Nick. Yeah. Okay, I'll follow you. Okay, great. Um, uh, so, a little bit about our organization. Um, we are the Illinois Network of Charter Schools, and uh, we are a policy and advocacy organization, uh, but we, we, we wear several hats. So uh, we, we support schools, so if they uh, kind of have any kind of day-to-day -day operational issues, they might call us. Uh, we also try to push favorable policy for, uh, for charters and just for education in general. So for example, one of the big issues right now is trying to get equitable funding for, uh, for charter schools. And then we also uh, look at a charter growth. So uh, we have a, a service where we essentially offer consulting to teams of, of educators that are interested in starting new schools. So we, we coach them and we kind of help guide them through the education through the application process. Uh, and uh, at Inks, our data work kind of supports all those things. Uh, additionally, um, and increasingly, we've been getting into uh, research and and kind of trying to drive quality in the sector. So this is what this, uh, this data is getting into. Uh, we are really interested lately in kind of getting um, as, uh, you know, as accurate as we can and kind of and, and transparent as we can in describing charter school quality uh, in our state. Um, so what we're going to look at today and getting into the data set is we put together um, a, a data set that has uh, ACT scores. Um, and, and for those of you that don't know, ACT is actually, um, it, well, it's, it's the high school exam, right, that, that students take to and need to apply to college. But um, most schools in our state kind of uh, have a, a suite of this test, so they take it at during their freshman year, uh, sophomore year, and uh, junior year, right? So we have kind of this cutting across different years so we can kind of potentially try to get a student growth, which to us is much more interesting than like attainment or a particular point in time. Um, additionally, uh, what you'll see in this data set, we've uh, included some outcome measures or, or you know, ultimate things we like to see when students are succeeding. So for example, college enrollment and college persistence. Um, and, you know, before we jump into this, and, and I hand it over to Nick, I'll say, um, you know, one of our constant st struggles at INCS is uh, data access, right? We actually don't get, don't have any privileges to things like student level data. We are limited to um, school level data. So essentially what, what uh, anyone, any citizen can, can access by going to the State Board of Education website or going to the Chicago Public Schools website. Anything U.S. can access. So anything we'll see tonight was pulled just directly from publicly accessible files. 
um, and and that's something we stand for. Uh, so, uh, any questions about inks or the date set or charter schools before uh, Nick takes over? So this you said it's aggregate, so we'd see like aggregate score per school or something. That's right. Yeah, it's averages at, at the school level. Do you see it before and after, like at the beginning of the school year, end of the school year? Year over year. So it'll the way it's organized is a given row is trying to follow a cohort of students. Okay. So if it's basically starting with their ninth grade school year, which would be the explore score that you see here. We then follow that that cohort, assuming there's a big assumption here, which is that the kids in the building are the same right. yeah. years, which yeah. is huge. So the conclusions that you draw here should have a huge grain of salt with that. Um, so that's the way it's organized. It's by row, um, they're kind of outcome in a year, yeah. probably over about six years. Um, I just was wondering, did you guys have like an anxious exam score as well? Because I know a lot of charter schools do take anxious exams. So charter schools don't take entrance exams. Oh, so yeah. there's no admissions requirement for oh, charter okay. schools. And it, it should be yeah. I thought there was. Uh, but their ninth grade <laughs> score is going to be a proxy for their starting point. So yeah, all the kids, and, and by the way, these the this data set will have data for both charter and non-charter schools. So okay. the other schools in the district that don't select on previous achievement, and then the selective schools that do. They have some sort of bar for academic achievement to be admitted. Mm -hmm. So those are all labeled in, in one of the school type columns. Yep. And really what we're interested in, right, is kind of using a, the earlier scores in the cohort of the students to predict later outcomes and then see if there's kind of a difference in terms of the relationship between school types, charter, non-selective, selective schools in the city. So, so that's kind of the driving question. You, so you're doing like multiple regression or logistics? That's what we'd like to set it up for. So yeah, when we get yeah. into the R portion, um, we're looking for some guidance about how to structure that regression. <laughs> <laughs> that's not our background. I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so actually, just a uh, Maybe double checking my understanding. So yeah, the, the clarification on this is uh, so there are a number of uh, variables here. So you know this is um, a school by cohorts, uh, 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 basically construction, and so it would be so uh, for right, so school by cohort. But it's by not a true subject. cohort. Right. right. It's not it's a true cohort. That's right. That's right. It's not. It is uh, a yeah. school. That's right. It doesn't. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a, re a repeated cross section for that school. Right. Uh, it, it doesn't necessarily have the same composition of kids. Right. Uh, at at each stage. Yeah. So it's like you know if uh, you know so like the group that was taking the plan score you know here this is like uh, in 2008 the 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 plan score or uh, sorry for this cohort the plan score was from 2008 the ACT score was from 2009. Yeah, college enrollment would would have been 2010, and then, uh, yeah, like that the five year high school graduation would be you know, 20, 11. Yeah, 2011. Yeah, gives them an extra year. Because, but it's a five year graduation rate from high school, but the college enrollment is based on the year after graduation. So it seems nonsensical that those that, that actually is the way that you put forward those yep. pair them together. Okay. Yeah, and so yeah, indi indicators are here. And for the earlier cohorts, there's another uh, measure of college persistence. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you guys had talked about the test scores. So we had a small side conversation. There's also like kind of aggregate student level statistics. Yeah, so the other thing, that, so one thing we're trying to account for since we can't hold the students constant year over year is um, trying to account for the demographics of the building that tend to drive student achievement. So um, the extent to which you have kind of a high portion, proportion of low income students or a high proportion of special education students. Um, we think that would be something to take into consideration as you're trying to predict the relationship between a starting achievement and an end point. So we've included the demographics of the students at the school level in the baseline year. Is that right, uh, uh, Alan? Or is it the ACT year? It is the ACT year. It's the ACT year. So the 11th grade year is what this is describing. Right. So one thing that we could improve is ideally we'd have more flexibility around the demographics. But see, but that's one of the limitations, right? 
we only get school level demographics rather than grade level demographics for schools. So if we had that sort of data transparency, we could design much better controls, but we unfortunately don't have that. Yeah. So it's so, parallel efforts to get more access to data. Yeah. Uh, do, do the schools have, or like the, the school networks, have uh, individual level data access? Sure. Yeah. Um, I think we get into tricky ground. So we'd only be able to collect it for charter schools in theory. And I think um, that's probably not a road we're going to go down, is, is collecting data directly from schools. Since we are an advocacy organization, one of the kind of driving principles <laughs> of our data work is to use what's publicly available so that people can have a harder time kind of casting doubt on our analysis. They, anybody can go pull the same data set down um, and see that there's no focus focus behind what we've done. Yeah. Well, what's we'll the code session? What's that? I can't argue with the code. That's right. That's right. Are you already putting this online, or is this available? So in, to a certain extent, we've taken um, similar reports and put them into Tableau interactive reports online, and folks can download the data behind it. Um, so in that sense, our, all of this data is already up there, not this exact data set. Well, maybe this. It is, yeah, you can, it, it's, it's behind you can one get of access reports. to it, yeah, yeah. But, but again, yeah, it's all just you know, CPS data just Merge. merged in, in different oh, ways. Oh, that's a super useful point. Can you tell me yeah. the exact website? Yeah, think schools, inc.schools.org. Um, and what you're looking for in the home page is a green box that says Charter School Data Finder. Oh. Interactive School Reports go over there. Yeah. Yep. So the green box on the left in the middle, yeah, Charter mm -hmm. School Data Finder, the top choice. Yeah. There you go. Then go to interactive school performance at the sub second sub menu. <laughs> We're working on the navigation for you. Then expand the academic attainment measures, uh, Nick. The, oh, yeah. 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 There's like a that. ribbon. And then just grab like the, the fourth one down, the fourth link right there. So this would be one application of a data set is just simply rank ordering schools by their ACT score in a given year. And then um, we've built in some kind of interactive features based on the other aspects of the school. So if you wanted to be able to hone in on schools yeah. in a given neighborhood or what have you, you could do that. And then the one thing it doesn't yet do is the thing exactly what we're doing today, which is controlling exactly. the sports. Yeah. Right? So try, that would make the message stronger. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. All right, here. I'm going to, uh, so if you didn't see me kind of sneakily uh, adding this, uh, so to the, the uh, Meetup event page, I uh, first put uh, a, a link to the, uh, the folder that the R session would be working on. Uh, so that has uh, a link to the aggregate data set, uh, also to some sample code that you know, we had worked on previously. Uh, it's like the cheat sheet, so no, no looking. Uh, but uh, I'm also adding uh, this link to like, okay. a, a couple of steps in. Uh, just so you guys can find it uh, afterward. Um, all right, so uh, data tasting's over. Thank, thanks for the description.